Welcome to today's episode of the Working Wisdom Podcast Series, brought to you by the C.T. Bauer College of Business at the University of Houston. We're having a conversation about work-life balance, how to navigate and overcome challenges within your career, and how to make business more accommodating to a diverse workforce. Hi, everybody. My name is Emma Armour. I'm a marketing senior graduating this December with a minor in sales from the Steven Stagner Sales Excellence Institute. I've held sales positions in Alaska, Seattle, and Houston. I am the former president of the global social entrepreneurship student organization called Enactus. I am the content creator of my blog at emmaarmor.com, and I currently work at the C.T. Bauer College of Business in the Rockwell Career Center as a student marketing assistant. So I'm honored to be here today to introduce today's guest, which is Noha Sanun. She's a corporate financial analyst at ExxonMobil. She is an alumna from the University of Houston. Uh, She obtained her bachelor's in business administration and accounting in 2015, as well as graduating as outstanding student for the master's in accountancy program in 2016. While at Bauer College of Business, she was president of the Bauer Women's Society, which was focused on professional development of young women in the corporate world. She conducted research in Bauer's Department of Management. She participated in the Ted Bauer Leadership Certificate Program. She has also held internships at ExxonMobil, Deloitte, and NASA. In the community and personally, she cares greatly about the economic empowerment of minorities and continually seeks opportunities with local organizations to get involved. She perpetually challenges herself to new ideas and is always interested in learning more about the world around her. Through sharing her experiences on social media accounts and on her blog, she is able to shape conversations and stereotypes about being a young Muslim woman in corporate America. Noha, welcome. Thank you, Emma. So you just graduated last year. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, I wanted to know, looking back, What are some of the biggest lessons that Bauer taught you, whether from a textbook or not? So I would say that the lessons that I learned from the Bauer College of Business were very centered around life experiences. Um, So the ability to lead an organization and lead a team, uh, to be a part of case competitions throughout the accounting program, and also to make a myriad of friends that are just from around the world and uh, really emphasize the diversity and and what Bauer brings to the table. So certainly I learned a lot from the textbook here in Bauer. Um, We have world-class professors and and opportunities that were uh, never afforded to me in the past before coming to Bauer. So I think that a lot of what I learned um, had to do with learning how to navigate uh, life and corporate America and, and be a business leader in whatever so we chose to do. Now, during your time at Bauer, um, and even after your graduation, you remain very involved on campus. Mm-hmm. So you, you were a leader in multiple <laughs> Bauer organizations. You participated in several Bauer programs. You sat on panels for Bauer Women's Society and the Ted Bauer Leadership Certificate Program as an alumni. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm curious, why did you choose Bauer initially? Uh, to come to school? Mm -hmm. So Bauer offered something that I felt I wasn't able to find in other schools. And and just a bit of backstory, I originally went to college to become a creative writer. Uh, That was all that I wanted to do growing up. I wanted to be a journalist. I wanted to explore the world. Uh, But what I quickly realized when I came into school is that that wasn't enough for me. Um, And I quickly fell into accounting classes here at Bauer which satiated both the love of analysis and research and number crunching with the innate passion of writing and communication and uh, studying news topics and and constantly looking at headlines. Uh, So I was able to kind of have the best of both worlds through my experiences at Bauer. And in coming back to all of these these events, these alumni panels, it was hard to let go (laughs) after I graduated. Uh, so I was always looking for opportunities to come back and talk to students and, and share my experiences with them as well. Do you have a favorite memory or a favorite experience out of everything that you've done here at Bauer? Um, I was a sophomore, so this was before NASA had, had popped into my plate, before I had any opportunities out there. Uh, when I first started college, my GPA was not as high as I had wanted it to be. So freshman year was a struggle because I was... Uh, 
I was always wondering, should I have stayed, you know, on the writing path? Should I had come to this business school? And my GPA was not as high as I had wanted it to be. And um, after that first semester as a freshman, I cracked down on school, um, completely cut out all of the trips to the UC I would have. I was like bowling three times a week. Uh, so I cut down on that. I started focusing more on my courses. I got to know my professors. I went to tutorials. I stayed late. I did everything I could. Um, and what happened in the following semester was that I was applying for internships and I was getting rejected left and right. Every opportunity that came up, I was not good enough for it. My GPA wasn't high enough. My communication skills were not on point. And um, the first time I applied to NASA, I got rejected and I never got an email back. And I remember feeling so defeated um, to have tried to have worked so hard uh, to come back up from that low GPA that I had earned in my very first semester. And um, in that time, I just remember not feeling like it was ever going to work out, that I would just, you know, continue life being very average, um, which is what I always have been and always will be. Uh, but it, it, it forced me to work harder. And um, I remember the following semester after that, after working hard, after practicing my interview skills hours and hours and hours on end, I started getting calls back. I started getting emails back. And uh, looking back at that time, it was then where I realized that rough circumstances will be dealt to you and how you learn how to deal with them is what matters. And so I didn't let myself give up. I, I refused to kind of accept uh, defeat in times where, you know, looking back was the most important. So you talked a little bit about your experiences in college. You talked about school, studying, and internships. One thing I'm curious about is what was your transition like from college to like real adult life, as they say, and what advice do you have for any students who are making that transition or have made it recently? So I think I had a little bit of taste of adult life uh, when I had taken off a semester of school to go work for NASA, but when I actually graduated and I realized that this is it and I'm never going to, you know, wake up and stand in line at Starbucks at Melcher's for, you know, 15 minutes and have breaks between classes and things like that, that's when I had to go through this adjustment. And it was a rough adjustment in the beginning. And if I could throw out any recommendations for students who are going through it, um, learn how to budget, first of all, know how to budget exactly what you're spending, know what you're spending on, get rid of the things that aren't necessities, learn how to manage your time as well. You should be, you know, waking up at the same time, going to bed at the same time for the most part. Um, and lastly, also have opportunities and create opportunities for yourself to have fun as well. Stay in touch with your friends from school, go back and give back to the students that are still there. Um, and make time for yourself and make sure you're taking care of yourself as well because work is one of those things that will take as much as you give it. And if you give it your all, you'll come up short on yourself sometimes. So make sure you're taking care of yourself. That's, that's my biggest takeaway. That's good advice. Um, you recently celebrated one year with ExxonMobil. Congratulations. Thank you. And what do you know now that you wish you had known when you first started with the company? So when I first started at ExxonMobil, I was immediately very intimidated. When they say that they hire the best and the brightest, they are not lying to you. Um, there are people there that are absolutely brilliant. And when I first walked in, the question that was running through my mind was, why am I here? And then also, how am I here? Um, but what that did was uh, force me to be more assertive, ask questions, to not be afraid, um, to make mistakes and then to learn from those mistakes and never make them again. So looking back, if I could go back to June 27, 2016, to the Noha Sanun that stepped into the ExxonMobil office, I would tell her, you know, stand up a little straighter, ask the right questions and smile. You're going to get through it. It's going to be fine. Next thing you know, you're going to be on a podcast with Emma Armour in the Bauer College of Business. All right. Thanks, Noha. We're going to take a short pause to hear an important message. And when we return, we'll talk, continue our conversation with Noha on how does she do it. Join the conversation. 
Bauer College's Working Families Initiative is bridging the gap between industry and academia to create a conversation on how organizations can make the workplace more family friendly. We're talking about flexibility, maternity and paternity leave, and career transitions. For more information about the Working Families Initiative at Bauer College, including upcoming events, visit bauer.uh.edu slash working families. All right, Noha. So let's talk about being a millennial in the workplace and how that shapes your experience there. My favorite. All right. So being a millennial these days um, comes naturally to the most of us. Uh, are you asking about ExxonMobil in specific? In the workplace, in the in community, the in school, whatever comes to mind. So I think being a millennial at school gives us a lot of opportunities to observe each other, uh, learn how each other work. Uh, how we like to work through situations and, and how we deal with certain circumstances. I would say that in the workplace, um, you really have to learn how to work with other generations. So, for example, the baby boomers tend to be more formal. Um, there's a lot of loyalty to whatever organization that they work for. Um, there's a different method of doing work uh, to the you know to things as simplistic as they like face-to-face -face meetings instead of phone calls or IMs, whereas we will, you know, I am the person sitting three feet behind us. Um, but I can say I think that corporate America is really taking strides towards shaping their cultures around what millennials see and do and how we work as a generation as well. So, for example, ExxonMobil, the, you know, quintessential American company or global company rather, um, is really taking strides towards bringing a new transformation to how we do work. So for instance, in, in the function that I work in, in the uh, finance and accounting world, um, we have this revolution of the technology that we use to move away from working with spreadsheets and um, you know moving data around and instead focusing on analytics and insights and how can we tell a story with the numbers that we have. Um, so really cool stuff going on. And I think that being in this generation, we are really pushing companies. We are pushing politics forward. We are um, changing the way that people do work. And it's a really cool thing to be a part of. Who is NOHA outside of work and school? If you can speak a little bit about your values and how that shapes the way you move through life. So NOHA Sanun, outside of work. Um, I, I would like to think I'm a pretty cool person, but quite frankly, that's my opinion, and I'm sure <laughs> others have other opinions. Um, I like to think of myself as someone who takes challenges head on, likes to take risks. I'm attempting to break out into the world of photography. I currently launched um, a blog of mine where I'm writing about my experiences um, at work, outside of work. Um, learning kind of how to navigate the world. And um, if there's one thing that I really like about myself, and, and sometimes that's kind of difficult to say, perhaps it is, you know, being a woman, being a woman in corporate or just myself in general. I like to critique myself a lot. I like to um, find areas of improvement. But if there's one thing that I really like about who I am, it's it's resiliency and it's open-mindedness. Um so values-wise, I would say integrity is the value that I hold closest to me. Uh, doing the right thing, doing the honest thing, staying true to what I believe in and, and staying true to others as well. And also, you know, just ensuring that I'm always putting myself in a situation where I have a chance to learn something new and I have a chance to meet people. One of my favorite things to do when I'm traveling is going to random coffee shops. And I have made so many friends that, quite frankly, I'm not sure I'll ever see again. Um, but people who I've sat across from in restaurants or coffee shops and, and shared a, you know, a dopio with. So a lot of cool experiences that I think uh, make me a little bit different outside of work than how I would be perceived sitting at my desk at work. Cool. For those who may not know, what does it mean to be a Muslima? A Muslima. So... A Muslima is a Muslim woman, um, and that's really all that it means. Uh, but I, I guess I can frame it being a Muslima in business school. So coming in Bauer, we are we are fortunate to have 
immense diversity in this school to where we have a lot of Muslims walking around. Um, in corporate, there's you know maybe two or three that I've seen across uh, the campus at work, and there were you know zero when I was at NASA, and, and just a few when when I interned at Deloitte. Um, I would say that being a Muslima is really taking the traits that we grow up with as Muslims to be honest, to be kind, um, to be characteristic of you know good virtue. And in the workplace and in business school, what that means, and particularly wearing a hijab um, around campus, means that you have to be the best version of yourself. You have to push yourself to truly represent who you are and what you believe in and make sure that when others walk away, they walk away with a smile. And that's always my goal. Have you ever had to overcome stereotypes? And do you have advice for anybody who maybe has to battle with others' preconceived notions of them? I think media does a, a very good job of uh, painting with a large brush. I'm not sure of the uh, exact uh, idiom, but uh, kind of generalizing people in, in certain categories at times. And I think our generation in specific is very quick to call it out. Um, I have, of course, faced stereotypes in the past where people have spoken a little bit louder when they assume that my English was not perfect or, you know, people giving me a dirty look or making a comment about how, you know, you, you don't have to wear that thing on your head. You know, you're in a free country now without fully understanding that it's my choice to do this and that the beauty of having freedom of choice is the beauty to cover or to not to cover or to not to cover. Is that even, <laughs> there's my English, there's my perfect English for you. <laughs> Um, but what I would say to any students who feel like they're, you know, facing any stereotypes, your feelings are valid. If you feel a certain way, if people are making you feel a certain way, those feelings are valid and don't write them off as you being too sensitive. Um, we live in a time where it is crucial for you to stand up for yourself, to stand up to what you believe in. Don't ever assimilate blindly. Um, if you're different, you're different for a beautiful reason. And oftentimes it's better to be different. Um, so be proud of who you are and be sure that you're walking through life um, very aware of who you are and what it is that you bring to the table. Because anytime I walk into a meeting room, whether, you know, no matter where I've worked or even here in Bauer, what I bring to the table is not a headscarf. It's the mind that rests beneath it. Now, uh, Noha, you've been met with a lot of success. Was it a smooth journey or did you ever stumble along the way? Oh, man. So... I would say that any success that you see in me or on Instagram, on LinkedIn, any success that you see is the surface of so many failures resting beneath it. I certainly didn't think I would come to where I am today. I never thought I'd be sitting across from one of my very good friends on a podcast for the business school that I love. I never thought I would go to business school. And, and like I said earlier, you know, there's a lot of times in the past where I fell flat on my face. Um, there were business competitions where I practiced for days and then got up on stage and forgot every word. There were times when I was president of the Barrow Women's Society, and every time I got behind a microphone, my voice would shake. There were times in accounting classes when I didn't think I would pass the course because it was that hard, and I would work as hard as I could, day and night, trying to just get a, a barely passing grade. And I remember um, right before I graduated with my master's degree, um, Dr. Newman and Dr. Newberry called me in, and they told me that I had been selected to be the uh, outstanding master's student to give a speech at graduation. And the only question running through my mind was how. I was not a 4.0. I never had, you know, I was never the, the perfect student who got A's on every exam. I struggled. And there were a lot of times where I didn't think I was going to make it through. But what I found throughout all of these experiences is that if there is one characteristic that you need to hone in yourself here at Bauer, it's perseverance. You need to take every failure that you're met with because you will absolutely face failure. You need to take those failures. You need to get up and move forward. If NASA had not rejected me the first time, I may not have applied again. It was that rejection where I was like, no, no, no. Absolutely not. I'm going to try again. I'm going to get. I'm going to get better grades. 
I'm going to work on my application. I'm going to sit and talk to my dad on the phone. He's going to interview me eight times a day until I feel more confident in who I am and how I'm coming across, and I'll get through it. And you did. And I did. So what is next for No Hasa Noon? That's a tough question to ask. Um, so currently, as you know, I'm an analyst at ExxonMobil. Um, great opportunity there. Lots of, of chances to be a part of really cool things, both at my desk and then also kind of outside of, of the realm of my responsibilities. So in addition to um, the work that I do in the corporate finance department, I'm also leading the photography club, and I'm a part of this energy team that, that gathers the millennials in the building, and we go out for coffee and, and things like that. So a lot of cool stuff going on at work. Outside of work, I'm trying to um, dedicate a lot more time to writing. I feel like that's the way that I think through things. And so the more that I write, the more comfortable I feel in, in everything that's going on in my life. And then also focusing more on photography, um, honing my skills, practicing on my friends, and, and not trying to break it out into a business per se, but to feel more comfortable with the way that I capture light. I feel like that's all it really is to me. How beautiful can I make this photo in just capturing light? Um, but aside from all of that, I, I hope to do more traveling. Um, hopefully that's all that comes next, just a lot more world travel and experiences and meeting new, new people and always coming back here to Bauer to harass you guys for a while and um, talk with you all. So lots to come, I hope. Awesome. I have one final question for you. So in one word, how do you do it? Caffeine. It's all it, I'm telling you. So four shots in the morning, four shots in the afternoon. <laughs> no, this is why we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for real, um, uh, a lot of support in my life. So faith and then family and friends compiled together. Um, so just a lot of support across the board, right? I have strong faith that what I'm doing matters. I have family and friends who are there to push me forward, even on the days where I don't want to get up. Um, and just a constant reminder of legacy. So why I'm here. I'm very fortunate to be where I am. I have family decades ago who never had the opportunity to go to school, who never had the chance to learn how to read and write. And I can't live with squandering any opportunity that comes my way. Because when you do things, you have to remember those who you're doing it for. So a, a lot of things around faith, family, and friends. But also, yes, caffeine. It is certainly the fuel of my life and, and hope to keep it that way. <laughs> so, Noha, thank you so much for Not joining us today. Thank I really you. appreciate you taking the time to answer all my questions. If people want to connect with you or learn more about you, how can they do that? So you can find me on LinkedIn at, at Noha Sanun. Uh, best of luck trying to spell that. Otherwise, you can find me on LinkedIn and Facebook. Feel free to reach out. Send me a message. Um, I'm just a message away. Thank you for listening to today's episode of the Working Wisdom podcast series from the C.T. Bauer College of Business, brought to you by the Working Families Initiative. The initiative aims to provide support and access for women in business school and the workforce and to generate research that organizations can use to implement policies and standards to benefit a diverse workforce. For more information about Bauer College and this podcast series, visit www.bauer.uh.edu slash podcast.